just to interject, gents, literally while you were talking about Spurs, Manchester United official club statement, Eric Ten Hag has left his role as Manchester United men's first team manager. It, it feels like someone's finally been put out of their agony, really. They've been dull, haven't they? This must have been a, a very, very difficult decision for them to make, um, whether it was Sir Jim or who, whether it came from, from the sporting directors. I mean, when you look back now, Jose Mourinho went into Manchester United in 2016 and in his first season won the League Cup and the UEFA League. What did we say a few weeks ago? Do they need an Arteta? And what I mean by an Arteta is somebody who's given the chance to clear out the dressing room, to get his philosophy across. Looks like Chavez! Ready! The joy of football. Now, if you're wondering why in a podcast called The Joy of Football we're talking about the struggling teams, it's because obviously as a Chelsea supporter, I just love these teams struggling. So let's come on to the one I'm enjoying most of all. Manchester United. Well, just to interject, gents, literally while you were talking about Spurs, Manchester United official club statement, Eric Ten Hag has left his role as Manchester United men's first team manager. Ruth Van Nistelrooy will take charge of the team as interim head coach. Well, there we go. Yeah. That, well, was, uh, that was our producer, uh, Billy Reid, who is a Manchester United season, season ticket holder. Oh, yeah, yes. um, I, I, I never liked Ruth Van Nistelrooy as a Manchester United centre forward. I thought he was a penalty area player who didn't do enough. He went to Real Madrid and was a far better player for Real Madrid than he ever was for Manchester United, in my estimation. Well, that, that's, there, there are certain rules and regulations I always think about managers who bring in coaches whether the coach should stay but I mean Rude was brought in for this so he wasn't an original Eric Ten Hag selection so I think it, it was probably made clear that there was a, a, a role for Rude beyond the Eric Ten Hag time but well it's it feels like someone's finally been put out of their agony really I mean Eric's done his best to try and um to try and justify the fact the results have not been um, clearly what they want. Do, as do as you we think... speak, they're 14th in the table. They lost at West Ham to a questionable penalty. I thought it, was, it wasn't questionable, yeah. it was just wrong. Well, yeah. I, even I'll admit that I think it a, was wrong. a draw, would, we would still be having the same conversation. Yeah, I mean, do you think it hasn't draw. helped his cause that Arnie Slot Dutch has gone into Liverpool and been so successful? Because, I mean, when you look back now... Um, uh, Jose Mourinho went into Manchester United in 2016 and in his first season won the League Cup and the UEFA League and in his second season came second and then when he struggled um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer went in and uh, in his first full season came second uh, and what, the, uh, what did we say a few weeks ago do they need an Arteta and what I mean by an Arteta is somebody who's given the chance to clear out the dressing room, to get his philosophy across, to be given some time. He, it helped that he, he won the FA Cup so soon. And it also day. helped. But, but, but Ten Don't... Hag won the League Cup in his first few months. Yeah. Manager, won the FA Cup, which perhaps... I don't know, prolonged the agony, I suppose, in the end. But, and, but Arsenal got a good structure with Arteta and Edu. Uh, Manchester United seems oh, to have an ever-changing structure. Well, we don't, we don't know because you know, Dan Ashworth and Jason Wilcox, who we've discussed a bit on this programme, um, you can't judge them on what's happened so far. This must have been a, a very, very difficult decision for them to make, um, whether it was Sir Jim or who, or whether it came from, from the sporting directors, because they had backed Eric Ten Hag and they interviewed other managers, so therefore whoever was out there was deemed not to be the right person to take over from a manager who'd had two silverware seasons but struggles either side of the of the trophy lifts really um, and I guess something well, it, it looks a reaction to to the West Ham game that it could have gone to the international break it could have gone to the point where where they're nearer that I think they're as we speak, they're seven points out of the bottom three and seven points out of the playoffs. 
Um, so you can go, it's, it's easier to go down than up. So they've got to do something. Um, and I, 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 I wait the speculation. There may be somebody, but we, this has happened during our podcast. So by the time we finish, uh, there might be another manager in place yeah. because uh, that's the way it works. But we know Rude Van Nistelrooy is going to do it until, yeah. Uh, can I just say, this is a wonderful moment. I'm going to correct Martin Tyler. Uh, Manchester United are not seven points off the playoffs. There are no playoffs. They're seven points so off, off the, the Europe, off Europe, Champions right. League uh, qualification. Off, off, off Was it Europe qualification or Champions League qualification? No, Champions League qualification. Champions yeah. off the top four. Yeah. Um, uh, they they have they've been dull, haven't they? Um, I, I I don't want to put down Eric Ten Hag because he produced a wonderfully entertaining Ajax team um, which got to the semi-finals of the Champions League in 2019 but but Manchester United have been dull the last couple of years their football has been prosaic it's been laboured and it has it not any, been Manchester United was, DNA I would say since Sir Alex um, stepped down would Solskjaer's United be the most attractive Probably. United in that period? Yeah, yeah. Um, when they were very counter-attacking, as the phrase now is, yeah. basically got the ball and went for it. Yeah, and produced some amazing comebacks and um, got points where they, uh, where they now, you you think, oh, it's one-one. Uh, it goes to one-one uh, at uh, the London Stadium, and um, there's only one winner. And Man United are going to win because that's what they do, and that's what they still have done a few times under Eric Ten Hag as well. There is something about the the DNA of the club that gets these you know, fantastic Fergie time moments that still exist under other managers. But no, I'm 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 not surprised it's happened because of uh, one result. But I am I'm wondering how they're going to, if you like, paint this as something that the new order is um, already shaken up the the order that they inherited and and they've done that by making people redundant and by bringing new um, staff in higher up the chain uh, and now they're going to have to change the managers so it's it is a bit of a mess um, and we're not used to associating but 19, I said this before in the podcast, 1967 to 1993, Manchester United were not champions of England. Yeah. And here we are, they were champions in 2013, and we're going to be the 2025 champions now. So that's only halfway through the barren period yeah. that, that, that existed. And before. formation to Matt Busby, they only won the league twice. Yeah. And Matt Busby to Alex Ferguson, they didn't win it once. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't win they don't win the league but they ought to get a Scottish manager clearly um, uh, I, I would just say this I had a very nasty conversation uh, last week I think uh, with our producer Billy Reid uh, the nastiness came from me none of it from him in which I went through the Manchester United squad and pointed out to him that there wasn't in my estimation one top four player in it um, and uh, he's looking at me now as but if I, uh, he could kill himself, not me. <laughs> to, to, to correct my own error, they're, they're only seven points away from <laughs> that, that top four positions. So. Yeah, so they can still do it. Right. Uh, we've talked about them. And uh, yeah. Uh, it's, well, it's extraordinary. You know, these, as everybody knows with podcasts, they are recorded at a certain, certain time. And we're stuck by the history that um, is, is, is history. But this is the most recent history that we've ever, ever introduced into the podcast. So <laughs> uh, thank you to Billy Reid. <laughs>